So welcome to episode two of Get Bent 3.0. So how'd you like that little opening there? It's going to be a regular thing, you know. See, if I'm going to be calling this thing a show all the time, I'm going to have to start treating it like one. So you'll be seeing more of that little opening segment in the weeks to come throughout the year. I don't know about you, but isn't the first thing that comes to mind when you think of your favorite shows, isn't it the theme song, the opening theme? Maybe not first all the time, but pretty close. Thank you for being a friend. So that kind of brings us to why we're here and why I'm wearing this shirt. See, as my little title card would suggest, I'm heading back down to Miami to spend Saturday night with the Golden Girls. Down back again. So, if you've been around long enough, you'll already know that I have a fondness for clip shows. And that comes from the Golden Girls. Now, I know that all kinds of other shows, lots of other shows, have done clip shows. But not quite as often, or quite like, the Golden Girls. You remember oh, that? I remember I was the first one to arrive, you remember? <laughs> and I was wearing that blue suit. Ah, uh, shut up and stroll with me down memory lane. I had taken in some sewing. It was a couple of weeks before Easter. But I'm not here to give you a clip show of a clip show. I'm not here to give you my favorite Golden Girls memories. Okay, well, I'll give you maybe one or two. There was that time right at the very beginning... And it, it pretty much sealed the deal between me and these old broads when all my 1985 worlds collided and this happened. Well, I loved her. The name Madonna doesn't really fit her. What would be better? So, please, please. She did things on that stage I never did with my husband. Oh, my God. <laughs> what a thing to say. So, there you go. An honorable and appropriate mention of your favorite and mine. I think they got it right, though, pretty much. You know, showing that mix of lover or hater that, that still follows her around to this very day. Of course, Blanche loved her. And of course, Rose didn't get her. Oh, how about that time that I took advice from Rose? I've been thinking about him ever since you told us that fable. You know how it is when you just can't get something out of your head? Oh, yeah, water's the worst. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I always wear earplugs when I shampoo. Years later, in my 30s, I noticed that uh, water was getting trapped in my ears. And I was getting, you know, ear infections and I was getting sick. And so... I noticed that every time I was uh, taking a shower that this scene would play over in my head, in my mind. And I, I see, I got it stuck in my head and I couldn't get it out. I thought it was a sign. So for a few years, I wore earplugs in the shower until I realized also that I was pushing earwax up into my ear canal, causing a whole other set of problems. So needless to say, I don't wear earplugs in the shower anymore. But I did for many years because of Rose. Hi, Blanche. Eat dirt and die trash. Oh, you don't have to worry about me, honey. I never get sick. I take very good care of myself. I treat my body like a temple. Yeah, it opens everyone, day or night. <laughs> Jealousy is a very ugly thing, Dorothy. And so are you in anything backless. <laughs> Another thing that kept me coming back every week was the language that they used on this show. I mean, they were, they were dirty, and they were rude, and they were mean to each other. But it wasn't just that. I mean, they, they were also doing stuff that no one else was doing at the time. There, there was the obvious, you know, the whole... Um, older women having sex thing. But it wasn't just that either. I mean, they weren't happy to just settle for the obvious. They always had to take it that one step further. <laughs> what is going on? Nothing. Oh, come on now. I heard you laughing. What's so funny? The star is she is a lesbian. <laughs> What's funny about that? You aren't surprised? Of course not. 
I mean, I've never known any personally, but isn't Danny Thomas one? <laughs> Not Lebanese, but <laughs> lesbian. 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 <laughs> but isn't that where one woman and another? We already know what it means. I mean, remember, this was the 80s, and I was a kid. I mean, between Madonna and these old broads, I learned a lot about sexuality from these women. Could explain a lot. A man has so much more to offer, you know what I mean, Doug? <laughs> yeah, I found that out when Mark Perper was running for class president in the third grade. Why, what does that have to do with anything? Well, his campaign slogan was, vote for me and I'll show you my wee-wee. <laughs> Does Rose know? No. Oh, good. I don't think you ought to tell her. After all, she's not as worldly and sophisticated about these things as I am. <laughs> Absolutely. If she finds out Danny Thomas is a lesbian, it'll break her heart. <laughs> um... So that nice little jaunt down memory lane, it isn't even why we're here. See, I'm here to show you something. Um, it's something that my uh, crazy mind has uh, dusted off and uncovered uh, in amongst all those other toys in the attic. You can consider it like a little seedling of this get bent thing that I do, like an original seedling. And, uh, I mean, okay, a few years ago, a song came out by the band called Yukon Blonde, and I thought because due to the title of the song and what I was thinking was ironic subject matter, uh, it always made me think of the Golden Girls. And not just like a, specifically a certain episode of the Golden Girls, a scene that I consider one of the greatest moments in the history of the Golden Girls. But I digress. And to add to the irony, it, it, of course it comes from a clip show. I, I, I guess I am giving you... A clip show of a clip show, aren't I? Uh, but but the scene would play in my head every time that I heard the song. So it didn't take me long to get, get up on the internet and to go try to find it. And find it, I did. So there I was, sitting there, you know, playing the thing on YouTube and, and listening to the song at the same time. And I realized that they would make a perfect video. It was like they were made for each other. They're meant to go together. Um, it just, everything lined up somehow. Um... So, but the only problem was that I didn't know how to put them together at the time. Not at all. I mean, I had a copy of the song, and uh, of course I had the DVD with the episode on it. Of course. Of course I have all of them. Um, what are you kidding me? But it is the only uh, Golden Girls memorabilia merchandise that I have in the house. There's nothing else. I don't go out shopping for Golden Girls Monopoly games or chess sets or anything like that. But those DVDs are copyrighted and copy protected. And I just couldn't figure out how to get that scene off of the DVD and get it onto my computer so that I could lay that song bed on top of it. I just couldn't figure it out back then. So it frustrated the hell out of me. And eventually I just gave up and forgot about it and put it away. And uh, But a year and a half after that, I started doing these videos. But the memory of that lost idea of a first video that I came up with, it, it never resurfaced until recently. But a few months ago, actually, I heard that song on the radio, and it all came back. And uh, before the song was over, I knew exactly what to do. And here we are. So when you witness what you're about to see, I just want you to take stock of that 98 that Betty White is wearing on her back. And just take a moment to reflect on her upcoming 98th birthday. Long live Betty. So then let me show you what would have been and could have been and should have been my first video if I could have just figured it all out back then. I mean, who knows? This could have been the fourth season of Get Bend instead of the third.
All I know for sure is that what I came up with, it couldn't have been any worse than the original video. A la la la, a la la la, a la la la